picked this early and picked into the Ancient Apparition, uh, it won't be as easy to pressure the DK in this game with the Kunkka, you know, we saw in that first game that I cast today. Uh, the FY, NK, uh, FY Nyx Assassin just running a Dragon Knight over and over Radiant and over again and actually giving him a really hard time. Uh, but I don't think Kunkka is really going to get Dragon accomplish the, the same things. Knight over and over Radiant and over again. DK unlikely to buy an armlet and against giving him a really hard time. Is already cutting uh, but I don't think Kunkka is really putting his blood regen pretty significantly. So DK probably just going to go for a pretty five man oriented build that it looks like LGD. FY just going to be taking a page out of the uh, LGD book and going for a, a very five man oriented strategy, but we'll see if this ancient apparition is going to throw a little bit of a Ten spanner in the works. Need a nice, alright, good. Five the the one monitor remaining. setup is a little bit concerning. Normally I look over at OBS on my other monitor and I can see instantly, but I have to alt tab. Reserve time. I'm, I'm just, I'm reclining right now while we do this draft. I'm, I'm chilling. I got a lot of Dota to do today. Um, Spend gonna be banned, LFY, I mean if they want the bristle back, it's still in the pool. Can't really, I mean you can still get sustain against Ancient Apparition. I always feel like a, a good example of, uh, you know, talking about A in that context, talking about A versus Dazzle. On the one hand, A is super annoying because you, Dazzle can't actually uh, heal during the Ice Blast, but on the other hand, if you survive the team fight, Dazzle is amazing at topping your team off, and you're pretty much going to go into every team fight at full HP as well. So you also help to reduce the value of the Ice Blast a little bit. Radiant so, team back. You know, it is still worth it to pick heroes that have healing against the Ancient Apparition. It just changes the way that you get value out of it. Uh, uh, back going to be banned. Vici probably saw that. Uh, that Vici J. LGD match earlier today Dyer and saw exactly the lineup that they went for with the Jug, uh, Bristle, DK. So I'm not going to let them assemble that triad here as LFY will just pan out a Fizzle's Void. Interesting. This hero's stock is really Ten rising in, uh, in the Chinese scene. I, and I love Dota 2 so much. The patch is remaining. so good. You know, on the, at big international ends, we see a lot of variance in between the individual teams in terms of their prof, uh, in terms of their Radiant preferences team pick. Uh, and what they enjoy doing. And then when we come to the regionals, each t like each region has its own overall flavor, and then you know, each team within that region also has their own Ten unique seconds things remaining. going on. It's it's really really cool to see. Five you know, seconds remaining. Uh, yeah. I was about to make some Skittles analogy, but I'll, I'll, I'll pass Reserve on that. Time. Don't quite know how that one was going to go. Anyway, Death Prophet picked up. I like the Death Prophet with the Ancient Apparition. Uh, the Ice Vortex helping to keep people down. Uh, bolstering that Spirit Siphon Dyer a little bit more. Pick. They're going to take the Oracle for themselves here. I don't know if Ichi would have really been able to pick it, but uh, it does help with some survivability against... The ancient apparition preventing people from shattering if they happen to drop low. Uh, Let's give some first magical damage against the death prophet, which is okay, but I don't know if that's really what you're, Five seconds you're remaining. picking the oracle for in this situation. And it is a good combo with the sand king. Reserve uh, the time. fortune's end, channel it up, burrow strikes in, then you get the purge on everyone. Uh, nice. The, uh, and the magic immunity, of course, is going to be really good this game, Beachy Gaming pretty much only showing magical damage so far. So if somebody gets axed and they're going to get torrent voted, you just throw the Fate Edict on them and they'll, they'll be just fine. It shouldn't be bursted down too easily. So uh, that's going to help Dragonite maybe get away without having to buy BKB super early this game. Um, the Death Prophet is a good laning matchup against the DK, but I think it's still a situation where the DK is going to get some semblance of farm. Uh, the offlaner for LFY will need to keep the Kanka and the Ancient Apparition occupied as best he can, but that might be a little bit difficult, especially with Vici, I think, likely saving their position one pickup until the very last pick. Uh, and that's going to give the opportunity for them to have Hao in a, in a great matchup. Radiant so team gonna pick. Pick. Just going to pick their offlaner right now. Um, they played the... Oh, well, Vici J playing the Doom early here. It's not a, not a bad, Ten not an awful remaining. Doom game. It is a little bit weird against Oracle in 
in some ways. Five seconds remaining. Um, the, the one thing that I will say is that dooming Dragon Knight, Reserve as much as it doesn't look great on paper, I think it's actually pretty value because Dragon Knight, a big part of the, his value as a hero is that he just exists in the middle of the fight and he gets off like three breed fires and three dragon tails over the duration of a long fight. But if you just doom him, then all he can do is auto attack and Dragon. Itself with just to his auto attacks Dire is not team that back. scary. So, all right. Well, they pick up the lichen. It seems like it's pretty good sustain uh, against the doom in lane, especially with the way that his passive works now, giving him all that Radiant HP team regen. Back. So, it should be able to sustain decently. Um, I like the ability for him to jump into the back lines and kill off the ancient apparition, kite away from the death prophet. The only real lockdown from the VP side being the. Being the next torn, so that's a little bit scary. Uh, I mean, you still have the opportunity Five to grab some kind remaining. of lock down from their safe lane, so something like a vengeful spirit could look good here. The wave of terror Reserve has some synergy time. with the death prophet ultimate, uh, bringing some extra damage, and the, the swap and the stun puts some extra control. The Sven has also been pick. the Sven's been banned out, so won't be able to grab that stunning safe loner. Uh, Void also removed. Wraith King is maybe an option, but Hero is not very popular, and I don't know if it's that amazing. This game could be decent for VT's remaining. lineup, but I think they might want a little bit more, maybe just Five a little bit more building remaining. damage from their position one. Uh, the Wraith King is really good at taking Rush on, which would be a, a bit of a boon for VT in taking these early fights against a, a very five man heavy LGD lineup. What is LFY going to pick? They can't pick Nyx. They would have loved to have Nyx against Doom and Death Prophet, that's for damn sure. Uh, what are they going to pick that doesn't die to the Kunk Ancient Apparition? Oh, Alright, well that's Dire team that's one pick. solution. The Puck offlane, Dragonite mid, like it's safe lane. Uh, can trade blows decently with the supports, kind of keep them there as the phase shift to be able to avoid death. And the, the orb also going to be very helpful. So Ten I like this pickup. Remaining. Gives them a little bit more burst against the Death Prophet as well. Uh, they have the front line from remaining. the Dragonite and the Lycan, so they don't really need that front line to come from their off lane. And the Vici Gaming. Time. What is the position one hero in this situation? I think the Venge still looks good. I don't know if Al plays Vengeful Spirit. Ten but, seconds uh, remaining. Venge seems alright. Uh, you could get a Silver Edge hero against the Dragon Knight, maybe, I don't know, alright. Chaos Knight gonna be the grab, there is some AoE magical damage on the LFY side, I think that Breathe Fire from the Dragon Knight actually gonna be pretty helpful against the Chaos Knight, but it's another safe laner with a stun, synergizing very nicely with the Ancient Apparition Cold Feet, and should be a pretty good CK game. This is a hero that's actually been getting picked a little bit more recently. We saw a couple of games over in Southeast Asia. Uh, Faceless, notably, losing a game with it, but uh, still put up a decent fight. And the biggest problem in that game for Faceless was they just couldn't get any farm on it early on. Whereas I think Howe's lane, the Kunk and the Ancient Apparition, is 100% like on lockdown. Shouldn't really be any way for LFY to mess him up too badly. Ten Maybe Sand King gets some really fast levels and goes and pressures with the puck, but I think other than that, uh, it should Five be alright. Alright, so, right, we're gonna get ourselves into the game in just a second. I'm gonna take a moment to blow my nose. So, uh, excuse me for a second, guys. I'll see you, I'll see you very soon. I can breathe. Ah. I can cast. Do this. Both your teams achieve looking to further cement their playoff spot at the moment, and LFY looking to crawl their way back up the ladder. You got Super on Dragon, Monet on Lycan, in Flame on Puck, uh, Afu's going to be on Sand King. 
and DDC over on the Oracle. Meanwhile, for Vichy, Yang on Doom, Ori on the Death Prophet, we've got Amy for HYM, I believe, on the Kunkka, Chuan on the Ancient Apparition, and yeah, second game in a row for him, and we have Hao on Chaos Knight. So, uh, in terms of early ward positions, Radiant already planting down both of theirs, getting some information around the place. Vichy gonna be going for a little bit of a mix up. They don't actually have any uh, wards battle. planted, but they are making a big aggressive rotation down towards bottom. It looks like they are not keen on this Lycan getting any semblance of early farm. Lycan is a little bit of a little bit afraid given that they haven't seen anybody show up here just yet. So I think a smart decision from him to back away and it looks like in the end they will actually be able to secure two bounty runes though uh, not the ones that they were perhaps expecting to grab. Yeah. The battle they're actually begins. just going to be dodging the, the aggro tri-lane. They do not want to have the Shaman King stuck in uh, the tri-lane versus tri-lane. They really want to have them moving around and, and doing things on the lanes. So, uh, even with that, it's just going to end up being kind of safe lane versus off lane overall. Uh, the off lane is actually going to be the one who ends up with the pulls this time around. But looks like the pull camp has been blocked out by Vichy over on this side and uh, the small camp not actually being blocked by LFY on the other side. So there's that small opportunity for the Doom, but Afu, nice little play, is going to block out the big camp and prevent Yang from getting the early Devour. Having Satter in this lane could be a big deal. So they're just going to drive him back early on. Oh, we do also have the Kunk throwing out some torrents at the mid lane. They do have some dire vision up here, so able to continue landing those even into the night time. And oh, action on the top lane. They've actually got trouble for the zoom. He's also going to get hit for the Fortress and Force. Skill up the Scorched Earth just to try and survive here, but will it be enough? One last touch. Not quite. Nice decision from him, and we'll end up surviving, but not getting the Devour early is going to end up hurting his overall top progression. Uh, just chasing Inflame through the tree, waiting for his orb to come back off cooldown, the reality rift on, off cooldown in one second's time, and Inflame doesn't have to find another day with the south. Uh, is Kunkka going to give up harassing on the mid lane? Dragonite, even with that pressure, doing decently. Looks like Super should be able to grab his bottle in just a second. And I wonder if the big difference between... I was about to say, I wonder if the big difference between how hard this Dragonite is getting pressured by the Kunkka uh. versus how hard he was getting pressured by the Nyx is in the, uh, the Nyx has mana burn. I don't actually think that F1 skilled mana burn very early in that game, so probably was not the, not the contributing factor. So, Alright, now we get some nice CS treatment. here and there. Has a mango in reserve to spam it into a couple of spells. But the Radiant's middle tower pretty elusive attack. without the torrent or the X marks to X mark the spot to set it up. Other than that, Kunkka just running some pulls. Wants to get that level two to profit. Starting to pull ahead a little bit on it, but it has already just a decent number of the spirit sessions. It looks like. Okay. Super with his points up in the Dragon's Blood, able to just sit here, sustain, see us with the Quelling Blade. I think it's gonna be alright. Oh, maybe some action up top, they're thinking about it. Maybe being off, we're just standing right next to one another. But how are actually taking some damage off of this puck? This dual lane is not working out at all how I expected. I mean, going to come in here for a couple of pot shots. Did not skill up the chilling touch early on as we do have a jump up top and I just barely had the first blood. Monet will be able to grab the Kunkka and burst him down. Just the howl plus the burst strike plus some auto attacks to find that kill. I mean LFY didn't have the most potent tri lane but they didn't even need to use the fortune's end to find that kill. Just able to muscle down Kunkka and Vichy. Not how they were hoping these lanes were going to go. Puck Surviving nicely against the dual lane, getting some Gold farm here and there. Chest. The Dragon Knight also trading farm pretty evenly against the Death Prophet. And the Doom just getting spanked. Through CS, it's killed the Scorched Earth level 1. They won't even let him come and get a Devour as they just harassing him back. Is this a, is an Orb of Venom on the... No, it's an Orb of Venom on the, the Light I thought that for a second that the Oracle had an Orb of Venom. But never mind that. And Vichy, their lineup does not play well from behind at all. CK is not a hero that flash farms. 
He doesn't catch up. The Death Prophet really wants her team to be strong so that she can be continuously using her ultimate every single time it's off cooldown. Uh, even Doom really reliant on the, the Doom damage actually being relevant. Super getting jumped here. Throws at the Breathe Fire for some damage reduction. Looks like he will be brought down as he gets slowed up by the Spirit Siphon. And this will be a successful rotation for the VG supports as they now manage to get on the board. Super able to hold on to his Arcane Rune as Doom once again getting forced out of this top lane. Two points up in the Howl during the nighttime and even DDC with his somewhat pitiful auto attack damage uh, can actually lay down the hurt against Doom who has zero base armor. How? Are, all right, what's what's the plan here? Is he just gonna keep on staying bottom? This Hawk is doing way too well. Wind Flame is not really getting pressured. He can grab his boots in just a second. I think definitely telling his team that he doesn't need them down bottom. And that means Afu just gonna go plant some more, steal some bounty runes, keep on applying pressure. Can't really go on Ori. He's just gonna throw out a double spirit siphon and heal off if they, they do try for that kill. But I don't know. Maybe they come and harass him a little bit now. And How has decided that he wants his safe lane back. This is his domain. He's king of the castle. We do have some action down bot, it looks like. Attempt on Yang's life with the Hal being popped as Monet is actually also going to rotate back down into his own safe lane. Uh, looks like a, well, we are going to actually see a Vlad's on the Lycan. Not a build that we see a ton of. Uh, I really like the armor against the Death Prophet. Super in trouble. Excellent. But this is where DDC comes into play. He's got the Fates Edict. Is it going to be enough to save the DK? He's got one charge still surviving, but one more auto attack will end up dropping him. Yang on the other side of the map also gets brought down. And so, what does Puck really do here? It looks like he's going to be looking for a door as this objective will get dealt with. It's going to be nice for the Dragon Knight, able to hide in the fog on his side of the map, at least during this night. Looks like Howl was maybe on cooldown. I think if with the Howl, maybe the dragon would survive that. But even with all of these ganks, Super is still farming. Uh, looks like he may have lost a little bit of gold to the last couple. Just a similar CS to the Death Prophet, but uh, you know, it's about gold behind. But it's Dragonite. He, he, I feel like he really thrives in this kind of situation. Even if he's getting ganks, he's still getting something. Behold! Chuan lands. Okay, still hunting. They know that the orb is on cooldown, so this could be a really good opportunity to kill him. Puck will be able to phase shift the stun, gets the silence out, preventing the. Fat follow up and in flame. What is in play? 3v1. Kunkka just running in too close to try and, and keep the auto attacks down, gets hit with the waiting rift, and in flame will even be able to go and shrine up and continue his reign of terror up here. On the top lane. Yeah, it damn. Alright, well, oh, I wrote the thing over right under uh, Dire Observer Ward, so they shouldn't really find anything here, but CK can't really switch the lane, especially that, given that his supports are not here right now. DK actually gonna take the CS lead on mid lane after popping his dragon form. Uh, or he did use the exorcism a little bit earlier, so he doesn't have that to push the tower, but. Both towers still very healthy as Yang. Level 5 just rotating through the Radiant Jungle. I'm trying to keep the porch down here at all, but no, they are still up top. As he will confirm. How pop the Phantasm? Is he trying to bait them with a Phantasm illusion? This is cute, but is it good? I, mean, I, think, I think Inflame has figured it out. Alright, how? Back to the drawing board for you. He's going to start channeling everything up. He's not actually that tanky. The belt of giant strength. I don't know if that's going to be enough to save him. Nice three seconds done, but he breaks the Druid Coil. He gets auto attacks in. This gank is now super obvious. This nobody can see to defend the Chaos Knight. But it might not even be a gank. It is an arcane thing. Up on the Death Prophet. Exorcism ready to go. And looks like they will just try and secure Take that. LFY pushing in lanes Radiant's that the mid takes some damage. The ultimate 
Only on cooldown for another four seconds, and Monet actually scouting Doom as he rotates over. Can they go on him here? That's the question. They've got the Lycan running over with his ultimate pop. Pal still available as well, looking for the crit. Yang just going to try for the TP out. But that means Dirkin Knight can just stay here and keep on working under the tier 1 tower. They will get the TP coming in from the Kanka. Exum forward to maybe get some additional TPs coming in as Chuan's going to come in from the shrine. Exum but... Nice damage mitigation on the Drag Knight, not really able to escape, so just turns around looking for that kill. Monet, one more auto attack finishes it. Ori continues the chase, gets another Spirit Siphon off the Dragon Tail, opens up some more room, and still alive, has another Brief Fire soon. Looks like Monet will be brought down. It ends up being a two for one on the mid lane, though at the very least, Vici Gaming will be able to hold on to their tower and claim this tier one tower down at bottom. But LFY are not. I'm done. Big smoke up. Two of the Death Prophets is going to glide from forward in the lane. Potentially be brought down, but it does respect the pop with the Dream Coil potential, and will not end up losing the life. Okay, so like and still working on the Vlad. I mean, the, the overwhelmingly popular build recently has been uh, the Armlet Mask of Vans, but like I was talking about for the Dragon Knight. Oh, Ori just wanted this double damage. Super still has some big auto attacks to lay down. They will not be able to make Dyer's it up to the high ground of the shrine. Looks like the Yang will be so lucky. There is another bar strike ready to go, but the Doom just a bit too tanky. That is a completely wasted ultimate. Dyer's uh, from the Thought will also be able to finish off this tier 1 tower. Probably after the long last, still a pretty decent Dyer's time being even tower to has fallen. And grab that, but yeah, I think the main reason that the left grabs the black here is he doesn't actually want armlet because he doesn't want to pick armlet against the against the Ichin apparition. So, Ichi, it was a good start, but falling behind a bit now. The death prophet can't really play without her teammates being in a position to actually move around. And I thought the CK's winning stage was going to be so good with the the Hunka and the Ichin apparition to have map, but it has not. That way at all, and all how has 10 minutes into the game is a bracer dread. Can they go for super? Not really. It's actually super is going to go on for him. Nice dodge. Another fantastic with the bonus illusion. Little good luck for how he tries to turn this around, but just not doing nearly enough damage. Dodging the dragon tail is going to keep him alive, but the phantasms already started to run out. The exorcism is back up, or but. Can they really defend this tower? That's the question. He's not quite level 6 just yet, but they've got the last stain, they've got the bonus damage, and they will be able to grab this tier 1. Chuan, dragged from like bottom to top to bot. Uh, they made a couple of times, but his level is not looking particularly impressive, and they desperately need this Ancient Apparition Ice Blast to start holding on to these objectives. I mean, you saw the CK go on the Sand King. There's not enough damage. They need to something Radiant else to throw into the mix. And I think that Ice Blast is definitely the answer. Radiance Sand is going to scatter up Chuan in the trees, but he managed to TP back to safety. In flame, a couple hundred gold away, or about a hundred gold away from his Blink Dagger. So it's another big timing for LFY. And the GR looking to slow that one down. They're coming in. Can they get the silence off? Nope. In flame, just too good. Fast reactions on the orb jaunt, oh, orb phase shift jaunt out. And the air. Is there even a point in the silence on the death prophet? There is, but it wasn't able to land it. Afu, no epicenter just yet, but Kunk might be in some trouble. There's the burrow to land. Can they get in range for the dragon tail? They will be able to. The howl also helping out with the damage and one more auto attack to do it. Oh. This is the problem of the death prophet, not on the, the front foot. They go on super, but. Can they actually make this work? Afu gonna try for the two-man Burrow Strike, but he gets silenced up by the Death Prophet. Burrow Strike now catches them out, and Ori actively popped the Exorcism for this. They need to find at least the one kill, but DDC might even be able to save Afu. Expending the False Promise. Now with no Exorcism available for two whole minutes, LFY have just been handed a couple of towers and a silver platter. Puck doesn't have the blink dagger just yet, but he's still got the dream coil, and it looks like Ori just gonna get burst. He doesn't even get the opportunity to bring Christ back in to heal him to Monet, and now looking over towards Kunkka. X Mark the spot, gonna keep him at bay just a little bit, but the torrent not gonna connect, and the wolf still chasing. Yang doing all that he can, but all that that all that he can do is just try and body block Radiant the wolf. Ultimate ends just the last moment. 
He's gonna be going for a necro book up next. Day. And it's an old school Lycan build. Push oriented build, and it seems to be the right fit Dyer's for this game. Even I think the wolves first. This is. I, I don't want to call another build a meme build. This is some old school stuff from LF. It's freaking. Dyer's top tower. Coral blitz first. I'm gonna get brought down with Puck unveiling that blink dagger. Did he manage to grab level six? Not quite. Is Kunkka level six? Not quite. These supports are supposed to be the backbone of Vici Gaming's team fight, and it's just not working that way at all. Like, they actually need their ultimates to be able to do that, and LFY are running them over. They've taken three towers before the level 6 has even come up on the support. So they've got a 6k net worth lead, they've got a 4k experience lead, and Vici just gonna have to try and deboard their jungle, keep on farming up on the Chaos Knight. He's trying to finish up a Midas. How not feeling like an early game went very well at all, but I don't even favor them in the late game here. Oh, maybe. Uh, they're so far behind, so it's hard to talk about the late game, but yeah, maybe... maybe Maybe I do favor them a little bit overall, but they have to get there first, and that's not going to be an easy task. DK, as expected, not going for armlet, just going to pick up a drum. Sand King, ooh, is that a Sand King blink dagger coming out? It looks like it will be. Alright, got the double blink, we haven't even really seen this blink in a team fight just yet for the puck. Chuan just wants to sit at level 6, needs one more creep to die in the vicinity. Can he come and steal it from his teammates? Nope. He is still just going to be shy. He'll probably get it in this next fight, but... How do they start off this fight? The CK is not tanky enough to really absorb any spells. They don't have any counter-initiating supports. They do finally have the ghost ship up on the Kunkka. So that's good news. But, uh, fire is going to be able to finish up some more items and keep on going. Looks like maybe they wait around for the Necrobook 1 on the Lycan. They are smoked, but not a whole lot of vision over uh, Vici only kind of showing the Chaos Knight for the time being. Right, finally, Ancient Apparition is also. That's, that's good. Splash going to get sent down bottom to try and slow down this push. Will Puck phase shift it? He will not. Right, so it's going to end up tanking the damage. He's working on a Veil. DDC has the maxed up Purifying Flames. The Oracle's damage actually looking pretty relevant this game against the Death Prophet, who is uh, only got a Yule Scepter to in him. Just working straight towards a, a BKB after that, and it looks like Vici have decided that this bottom lane is the spot for an engagement, but I'm not so sure. That's an arcane double damage Dragon Knight pushing in towards their tier 1, and you just ask the question, what tier 1? Because it's already gone. Vici now trying to line up for tier 2 defense, but it's all on Amy to just land a random into a ghost ship and why not even uh they're, they're even suspicious of the road to see anybody on Vici on the map but like are they trying to are they trying to use an exorcism to take a on here what the hell is going on but it's just that Vici feel so afraid they that they're behind their chaos knight isn't doing anything this last pick was supposed to be the was supposed to be the piece in the hole but it's it's not worked out that way at all Okay, just being forced to swap lanes, not getting any kills, in flame, still zero depth, four, zero and one on the puck. I didn't know if there was any way for him to survive against that lane, but he, he, he proved otherwise. So, Oracle just could go for an eighth of lens. Doom picking up some tranquil boot. Okay, it's a drum. Not amazing, but not bad either. The, problem comes back to this issue of nobody is really afraid of being doomed. Like, LFY just have the sustain where they can just wait out the doom and then re-engage the fight. They can use the Oracle ulti, they can use the Howl, Dragon Knight's naturally tanky. And speaking of Dragon Knight, more pickoff items coming up. He's got himself a Shadow Blade. LFY just happily farming everywhere and continuing to grow this net worth lead more and more because they know that Vici's heroes just don't hit creeps. Doom, I mean, he eats creeps. He doesn't necessarily hit them that fast. Uh, yeah, the Chaos Knight, I mean, what's he doing? I guess he's got the Midas now. The dream is to play for the late game. Oh, 
Well, looking like my Kunkka might be pretty good. Gets dragon tailed up, Bird of Dragon to follow. Won't even be unstunned before he gets sent back to the fountain. And Ichi, what can they really hope to accomplish here? LFY in the pit, that Necro going to work along with how everybody else gonna come in and join the party, probably giving the Aegis over to the Lycan so that the high ground sieging can begin after they take out these tier twos. Chaos just working on a drum, how buying some little items here and there. The Ice Blast will get sent over into the pit, but I don't think that's too much of a concern for LFY. As the agent no the Vichy J and Vichy both have picked this Doom. And, um, <laughs> I'm not convinced. I mean, the... In a 2v1 situation, I think he can do pretty well, and he puts a lot of pressure on the carry, but... The problem was that LFY didn't even care that. Ooh, that's a that's a kill on the fuck. I didn't even see that he was getting dumped. But all right, nice. They end that streak. It gets put onto Chuan, who is also working on a Midas. Uh, but yeah, I feel like the Doom just didn't work the way that they were expecting either. I think part of it was that they were thinking, oh, we ganked the Dragonite, and then we'll force rotation. LFY just didn't care. Hunk it down. I'm trying to steal some Bansurins over in the Radiant Junk. Thievery will be punished by death. And she gaming. Oh, well, that's some space to go and farm up. But Necro 3 and an Aegis on this Lycan. This is a pretty insane timing. And looking like this tier 2 should be next on the chopping block. They've got the Dragonite ultimate. In a mere 8 seconds time, he did opt for the Strength Talent this game. He's feeling like he has enough attack speed between the Drum of Endurance and the Shadow Blade. He will cruise on forward. Does CK have his level 2 ultimate? He does. Can he get lucky and get the bonus illusion? Maybe he can. Maybe that's where they can actually start bursting. Uh, I don't even know. Can they burst this like him? He doesn't have too much armor, even with the Vlads. Maybe there's an opportunity there. I'm not so sure about the dragon. Apparition up to level 8. I'm making some inroads towards that improved dice blast. That's why I don't know if this train has any breaks. Arena in the trap. The middle end's in trouble. They're gonna come jumping in. Actually, it looks like he'll just straight first. It can't even get the fans of the mob and no more day. No one he can just charge straight. They've got coil onto multiple heroes. The Death Prophet hasn't even got the ultimate off yet. They doom the Lycan, but what does it matter? He's got the ultimate from the Oracle. He's gonna keep chasing. He's also got the Aegis. Two buybacks. It's a five man wipe already. We could even make it seven as Inflate picks up a triple. Monet survives courtesy of the Feral Impulse regen and more buybacks coming in. But to no avail, Death Prophet, can she get her ultimate off this time around? No, she's just going to get bursted. And LFY just completely taking control of this dire base. Ice Blast is going to connect nicely. Apu, what is in most cool, but DDC always has that Fates Edict to help keep him healthy. LFY will not be denied. Have popped the Phantasm, did they get the bonus illusion? No luck for how, and as far as strike catching him out, the silence also coming in. Doom unable to really do too much. LFY dropped the low with two bristles with these anti. They finished off the Doom, and how continues to fight? Lycan almost dead, but that's just the Aegis. Dragonite almost gone. Can they finish? Stick charge is keeping him alive. The four seconds stun will put him to the grave, but they can't kill the Lycan. They can't even pop the Aegis. Afu diving past the tier fours to kill off the Ancient Apparition, and I think that was. Three buybacks were the best from Peachy Gaming as they will lose their mid lane of Rax. The Lycan's not done, the Necrobook is back off cooldown, and he will lead his team to take yet another lane. LFY just looking great. They picked the Dragon Knight so confidently. If they second picked it, then they're like, yep, you guys can't do anything about this. We're gonna pick Dragon into Ancient Apparition, and we don't care. And with that, Peachy Gaming, all GG. Their playoff spot getting more and more tenuous as LFY do fight back. Uh, I think they're 3-3 three and three now overall, so it's not great. They might be relying on some kind of a tiebreaker situation to make it into the playoffs. But they take a page out of the LGD uh, book here, going for the death ball team fight kind of a lineup, and works out great. I, I mean, I have to give so much props to Inflame this game. I 